Welcome back to Fast Money. The crypto craze is back in full swing, and it's not just the biggest coins that are surging. Bob Bassani is breaking down the rally in altcoins from the NYSE. Hi, Bob. Hello, Melissa. You know, it's not just Ripple and Ethereum and Litecoin. We did that yesterday. Even the smaller altcoins have been moving recently. So Bitcoin Cash, Stellar, NEO, Cardano, you don't know them? You should. They all had significant intraday moves up today. Bitcoin Cash was up 15 percent. Stellar's up 12 percent. NEO up 6 percent. Cardano up 1 percent. This is just today. But since bottoming, these smaller coins have outperformed the bigger guys. So Bitcoin Cash is up 45 percent since it bottomed April 6th just a few weeks ago, along with a slew of other cryptocurrencies that did the same thing. NEO, another altcoin with a market cap of almost $5 billion. That's up 59% since bottoming on the same day. Stellar was another altcoin hit by the crypto crush, and it's up 82% from its bottom as well. And finally, Cardano, which had actually bottomed sooner than the rest on March 18th, it's doubled in price since that date. Now, that's the good news. But as we discussed yesterday, these are a long, long way from the highs they hit in December and January. And I know this makes your head spin, but Stellar's down 63% from its high. Cardano, 80%. Bitcoin Cash, 78%. NEO's down 56%. This is just as bad as the drop in the bigger names. So there's no real distinguish between the big and the small guys when it comes to who got hit. And when you're dealing with these micro altcoins, as you might call them, it's good to remember that you're not dealing with a lot of liquidity. Bitcoin's cash is market cap in December when it hit record highs with $69 billion. It's $15 billion today, $15 billion. That's only 5% of the roughly $300 billion in market cap of the entire cryptocurrency market. Melissa, it's very important to point that out for liquidity purposes. Back to you. Absolutely, Bob. Thank you, Bob Bassani at the NYSE. Well, the rally in all kind, altcoins aside, our next guest says that Bitcoin is flashing a rare buy sign that is hinting at a huge rally ahead. Dan Moorhead is the CEO of Pantera Capital. He's here on set with us. Dan, welcome back to the show. Thank you. What are you seeing in the charts? What are you seeing out there that makes you think the worst is over? So Bitcoin's been growing at 165% per year for six years that we've uh, been in business. And something that's growing that fast hardly ever gets down below its 200-day moving average. When it does, it's a very good time to buy. It did five years ago when we launched our first fund, and it just crossed that earlier in April. What makes this different from another asset where you might say, you know, crossing below the 200-day moving average is actually a bad thing? Yeah, so they <laughs> use... Uh, Technical traders use these different averages to decide when to get in, but it's amazing that Bitcoin goes up so quickly that when it just gets back to its average, that means it's time to buy again because it's been a vertical uh, line for eight years. Dan, congratulations on being an institutional investor who's doing you know, alternative assets and emerging markets and other things long before you stumbled onto this, but you stumbled very, very early, so you didn't just jump on this train. What's holding back other institutions? You're as well suited to opine on this. You've been running an institutional hedge fund business for a long time. Yeah, so there's been a lot of credentialization milestones. Uh, the biggest one recently is the CME and CBOE doing futures. That helps uh, bring in other investors. And I think the last big one is a SEC regulated custodian. So when we launched our first fund, we had all the standard things you'd have in a normal hedge fund, but you, you don't yet have a regulated custodian. And I think that's the last piece. And some firms have announced that they will do crypto custody within the next, say, 12 months. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll be a very big yeah. moment. I'm sure, uh, you know, when Bitcoin was going up to its heights, uh, there are a lot of funds that actually started up. Not a very good time to start, in yeah. a way, because they had to ride the crash lower. You are fortunate. You've been in business for a long time. Your return, I think, over time is, what, 25,000% over your That's lifetime? All. Yeah, That's exactly. all, Dan. <laughs> At the same time... The value of your fund, your cryptocurrency fund, was yep. cut in half or so? Yes. Since the beginning yeah, so of it's, the year? Yeah, so it's correlated with the markets. So what are you seeing in terms of the industry overall? It, has there been a shakeout in your space in terms of the funds that had opened up more recently? It's so new. There's only a handful of funds that have been around for more than a year. And so you read that there's 200 hedge funds now, but I haven't met 200 different managers. I don't know if that, that really exists. I would imagine there'll be a big shakeout um, with the funds that... Uh, most are long only funds. That's very mm -hmm. common. Um, we have a long short fund so that we can, you know, weather down drafts and, in fact, be up over the last four months when Bitcoin's gotten killed. Right. So how did you? How are you positioning yourself right now? I mean, you obviously were talking about the chart in Bitcoin specifically, but in some of the other coins, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ripple. I mean, where do you see that going? How sure. are you? Uh, 
you know, where are you putting your money? So in December, when the markets were going uh, vertical, we did raise some cash so that if they uh, crashed, we could be fully invested. We're now fully invested. I think this is a, a rare opportunity um, to get into something 65% below its highs. You don't get that opportunity very often. Uh, and we dynamically trade all the different currencies. There's about 60 that are liquid enough for us to trade. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Bitcoin, Ripple, Zcash, things like that. Hey, Dan, back in December, right before the top in Bitcoin, I heard you on CNBC. Yep. You said one of the things that's really attractive about digital assets is the, how they're not correlated to traditional yep. investment assets. Since then, they've actually been pretty correlated. If you think about the run-up, um, I know Jeffrey Gunlock from Double Line has said, watch Bitcoin because that's going to tell you where stocks are going to go. That's really been the case since December. How do you feel about that right now? Yes, uh, there was a very coincident drop in the equity markets and Bitcoin. But statistically, it never got above 0.2 correlation between stocks and Bitcoin. And it's, it's really true that Bitcoin's a half a trillion dollar market that nobody owns. I mean, it really isn't owned by institutional investors. So when they have to sell equities to hedge whatever risks they have, they don't have any Bitcoin or crypto to sell. And that's one of its advantages. All right, Dan, we're going to leave it there. Great to see you. Hope Great. you come back. Dan Moorhead of Pantera. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear about the 200-day. And for a lot of people to, to believe that an asset class like this, like Bitcoin, could actually respect you know, major technicals, it, it absolutely has. I, I, you bring up a great point, though. You know, it traded through there, and it didn't look like it was holding it. And there was a lot of days where a, a lot of people thought, and I think, Dan, you, uh, am I wrong? I mean, we could maybe test 5,000 again? Yeah, I, I, listen, I think that was a really nice bounce. It was really a one-day bounce. It's held there now. If you look at the log chart since the high in January, if you're just looking at the technicals of it, it's at a pretty crucial spot here. And if it fails and we have more concern about regulation and that sort of thing, it's going back to the November level where it broke out from, and it went from 5,000 to 10,000 to 20,000. So to me, I think just like it overshot to the upside, there's a good chance it does so to So are you downside. uncomfortable with it at this point? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean it listen, sounds like it. That's can why I, I'm Can I tell you something, though? If you're buying an asset like this, you know, we've talked about it. Everybody, the best crypto investors who come on here, saying to people, our viewers, you shouldn't have more than 5% of your investable assets. And if that's the case, then if you buy here at 8,000, you better be prepared to buy again at 6,500 and then at 5,000. So it's that sort of thing, because look at the way it's been moving over the last year and a half. If we put up that chart again, we hid what it was. I look, we play we this, do this game, we play this game a lot. You put up a chart and you, you, you block it out. Right, and God right. gets especially confused every what time. Would you like say, confused what would you say the board. direction of Higher, the line would Mel. be? Higher, and we okay. talked about this. We well. played this game a week and a half ago. Recall when Bitcoin was trading 6,500 bounce mm -hmm. and we said, you said, if you took the thing off the top yeah. and looked at this chart, I said, you know what? It looks like it made a bottoming formation, and we should be headed higher. I think Dan makes a good point. We are at critical levels, not unlike what we are in the S&P. So... S&P held where it should have. Bitcoin held where it should have. They both seem to want to go higher from here, in my opinion. First, they'll ignore you. Then they'll laugh at you. Then they'll fight you. Then you'll win.